that to you. If you will, take your Bibles and turn with me to Psalm number 37. Psalm number 37. And uh, I want to bring to you a message that I've simply titled, Stop It. And uh, it's kind of amazing to me because God... Uh, God laid this on my heart this afternoon, so I've not spent a lot of time in study and preparation uh, to bring you this message. And I don't know where it may go. I have no earthly idea. But I do know this. God knows what He's doing, and uh, He just laid this on my heart, and so I want to share it with you. Uh, Psalm 37, and I'm going to look at one verse of Scripture as my text verse. And uh, then uh, I'll refer to several other verses, but my text verse is going to be verse number 27. Psalm 37, verse 27. Notice what the Bible says here. It says, Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. Let's pray together. Father, as we come into your presence just now, we give you praise, honor, and glory for the opportunity you give us to break the bread of life. And dear Lord, we're grateful for the message that, that you laid upon my heart this afternoon, uh, leading me in a different direction. And we're glad that you're a God that knows all direction. And so Lord, I would pray that you would bless this to our hearts. Open our hearts that we might be able to receive that that you have for us. And then use this for your glory, O oh Lord, uh, in our lives to make a difference in our lives. Uh, fill us full of you so that we can go out into the world and spill over. That others can see Jesus for it's in his precious name I pray. Amen. I don't know how you feel, but I feel like that we're living in a very stressful time. I really do. And uh, there are a lot of people that that's just really stressed out over some of the things that's going on in our nation today. And uh, as should be, we should be concerned, but God doesn't want us to be stressed out over some of the things that are happening right in front of our faces today. God has always had a remnant of people that followed Him. And God will always bless that remnant. Now, I am not going to stand here and tell you that you may not have to go through something in the days to come. Jesus Himself said, In this world ye shall have tribulation. Now, I don't know how you feel, but I don't like tribulation. Amen? Amen. I don't like tribulation, but yet and still Jesus said, in this world, you shall have tribulation. Now, I look at some of our youngsters just now, and they probably don't understand tribulation or troubles because they've not had a whole lot of troubles. I talked to a young person one time and said that to them. said, preacher, you don't know how school has changed over the years. said, we get tribulated every day. <laughs> But I want you to know that Jesus said in this world you shall have tribulation. But he said be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And just as Jesus is an overcomer, he's made you and I to be an overcomer as well. If we were to begin to really go in depth into this particular psalm and look at some of the things that we would find out in this particular psalm, we would find that there's a lot of stress produ producers uh, that's mentioned to us in this particular chapter. In verse number one, it talks about evil doers. Our world is filled with evil doers. Uh, in verse number three, it talks about our needs and the inadequacies that we possess in not having. Uh, uh, what we need or what we want. Uh, God didn't promise us our wants. He promised us our needs. Uh, in verse number 3, it basically deals with that. It says, Trust in the Lord and do good, and so shalt thou dwell in the land. And he goes on and says, And verily thou shalt be fed. How are we fed? By trusting in the Lord. So 
So there's needs and inadequacies in our life. But if we'll trust in the Lord, God will meet that need. And then we find fleeting satisfactions of life in, in verse number 4. And uncertainties and difficulties mentioned in verse 5. And, 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 and we could go on and on. The upsetting and the unexplainable things that happen uh, or happens in verse number 7. And, and then there's the overload, especially with anger and, and some of the things that we see uh, that's going on in the world today that may bring that about in, in verse number 8. And, but as we do begin to deal with verse number 27, we begin to, to see the stress that, that is caused by self-centered situations. Now, there are three or maybe four things that I want to share with you that God revealed to me in this particular verse of Scripture this afternoon. As we were preparing to uh, come to our discipleship class at 5 o'clock, I was really working trying to get this put together and my sweet darling little wife who always takes care of me and I thank God for her because she, she always takes care of me she came into my little office at home and she looked at me and says, Honey, do you know what time it is? And I looked at my watch and I said, Yes, dear. Uh, she says, We're going to be late. I said, I can't help it. If we're late, I've got to finish this because I've got to preach it tonight. And so uh, she said, Well, you know, we, 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 we're supposed to be there at five. I said, Well, give me just a few more minutes. She always keeps me on time. There's been a lot of times I've been late if it weren't for her. And so I thank God for her. But now, the thing that I want you to see in this verse of Scripture, first of all, is this. The problem. The problem. Much, listen, much of our stress in today's times, it's self-produced. Now, I want to say that again. It's self-produced. Now, somebody would say, now preacher, what are you talking about when you tell me that most of the stress that I face is self-produced? Well, I want to give you three areas that I believe that we produce these problems. First of all, we produce these problems by wrong choices. To that, I say, stop it! Stop making wrong choices! Listen, the Bible teaches us about the choices that we need to make in life. Now, I'm a sporadic spender. And my wife will say to that, Stop it. <laughs> I'm a sporadic spender from time to time. And I have taken a new job where I live in my automobile a good bit of the time. And uh, so I'm on the road a good bit. And my knees are not as strong as they used to be. And now I have to get in and out of that automobile a good bit. And so I decided I would slip over to the forward place and talk to them about trading my pretty black car. And uh, wanted something with a little bit more gas mileage, you know. And something a little higher off the ground where it wouldn't hurt me so bad to get out. Until they told me how much it was and how much the payments was going to be. And I fell in love with my black car all over again. You see, I was about to make a wrong decision. Listen, there's a lot of us makes decisions before we ever stop to talk to God about the decisions that we're about to make. Listen, we need to stop. Stop it and talk to God before you make any type of choice. So there's wrong choices that we make. And those wrong choices bring about stress in our life. Secondly, not only do we make wrong choices, but we make wrong by the actions that we do. We get so involved in acting the wrong way. And to that, I say, stop it. Stop it. Listen, actions speak louder than words. Your life may be the only Bible that somebody will ever read. Do you know that? 
Your life may be the only Bible that some will ever read. <laughs> I think about my youngest son whenever I, whenever I, I, I bring this to mind. He was sitting in a bank one time and, and, and there were some ladies sitting behind him in that particular bank that had chairs back to back. He was sitting on one side, ladies were sitting on the other, and they were prominent members of a good church in that particular town. And they were having a good time crucifying their preacher that day. And my son, who is a police officer, and he was dressed in his uniform, got up, walked around and looked at those ladies, and this is what he said to them. Ladies, I didn't mean to overhear what you were saying. And I apologize to you that I heard what you had to say. But I just want you to know my daddy's been a Baptist preacher for over 30 years. And said, it's people like you that turn people off from going to the house of God. Talking about your preacher. And I've heard every word you had to say about him. You know what my son was basically saying? Stop it! Stop it! Don't be talking about your preacher. Pray for your preacher. Stop it! So your actions, listen, you don't ever know who may be watching what you're doing. You never know who may be seeing everything that you do. Your life may be the only Bible that some will ever see. So have right actions in your life. Thirdly, not only making wrong choices, not acting in the right way, but thirdly, listen, by thinking the wrong thing. You know what I call that? I call that stinking thinking. That's exactly what it is. Stinking thinking. Let me tell you something. Do you know that your mind, your conscience, is where Satan attacks you more than any place else? People say, well, he attacks your heart. No, he gets in your head. And if he can get in your head... My friend, he moves from your head to your heart. He does everything in his power to cause you to have stinking thinking. Listen, all I can say to that is stop it. Stop having stinking thinking. Listen, many of our most stressful situations come about in our lives are the ones that we've managed to get ourselves into. The ones that we've managed to really get bogged down in. That's the problem. You see, we bring a lot of stress on ourselves. Now the second thing that I want you to see that God revealed to me this afternoon is that there is a prescription for the problem. Bless God we're living in a day where there's a prescription for everything. Amen? Miss Sarah Catherine was a pharmacist. She knows I'm telling the truth. There's a prescription for everything. Isn't that right? There is a prescription for everything. Man, if you stump your toe and you hurt yourself, you can go get something for the pain. Man, there's something for everything. I mean, hey, I remember when I was a boy, they always said, go take an aspirin, you'll be all right. Go take an aspirin. My daddy always said, go get you a goodie powder. <laughs> You'll be all right. But let me give you the prescription for the problem. Now, the prescription for the problem is found in the very first portion of Scripture. It says right here, depart from evil. So evil is fairly generally, rather, it is generally the name for the wrong that has has invaded our life. So what do we need to do? We need to depart from evil. This is a comprehensive, listen, commandment. It is a commandment that we need to depart from evil. What is the psalmist saying to us? He's saying, stop it. Don't do evil. Stop it. Do nothing wrong. Stop doing evil. Stop it. And then he goes on to say, don't break the laws of God. Somebody says, you mean God's got laws? Yes. Listen, Moses went to the top of a mountain 
And God carved them and wrote them into stone with His fingertip. And He gave ten simple little principles for man to live by. And man has taken those ten simple little principles and they're still trying to write laws. And I don't know how many laws has come from ten simple little principles. Somebody says, well, the Ten Commandments are not for today. Yes, they are. Jesus said, I did not come to destroy the law, but that the law would be fulfilled in me. And He's given us two 